Uh, Go ahead. Hello, uh, I'm David Vrabel. I'm part of the uh, Zen Server team at Citrix. Uh, and I'm going to talk about some of the work that I've done on removing one of the scalability limits uh, inside Zen. So uh, the limit to the number of event channels uh, that a, uh, a guest can support uh, basically limits the number of VMs you can support um, because it limits the number of uh, front end devices that can connect to the back end. Um, so, uh, what are event channels first? Uh, event channels are Zen's uh, method of doing power virtualized interrupts. Um, they're uh, edge triggered, uh, they're bi directional, and that if you set up an event channel between, say, a front end and a back end, uh, the front end can signal the back end and vice versa. Uh, and they're also always directed at a single vCPU. So with these uh, properties, uh, event channels can be used to uh, virtualize uh, all types of interrupts. So they're used for uh, the interdomain interrupts for front and back ends. They're used for uh, interprocessor interrupts, IPIs. They're used for virtual works for things like the PV timers and the, and the PV console. Uh, they're used for physical ERCs, MSI and MSIX, and they use, despite being edge triggered, they're also used for level triggered physical ERCs with a bit of extra, extra stuff. Um, so how, how do they work? Uh, well, in this example here, we have domain A wants to send uh, effectively an interrupt to domain B. So at first it notifies, it does a notify hypercall uh, into Zen. Uh, Zen then writes into the uh, piece of memory shared by the um, target domain with Zen. So it sets a, uh, something in there that says that there's an event pending. Uh, it then triggers an up call into uh, the guest. Um, and then the guest then looks at its shared memory and sees that there's an event pending and then calls the appropriate uh, hand for that. So uh, the thing that limits the number of event channels you can have is the layout uh, and structure of the shared memory. Um, so this is the, the current uh, layout. So if you look at the, at the bottom there, uh, that's the shared memory. And we have uh, an array of bits uh, to say that there's an event pending. So we have 4,096 bits on a 64-bit guest. So we can have at most uh, 4,096 events. Um, there's also a, a equivalent array of masked bits that a guest uses to uh, prevent delivery of an event, um, a specific event. Now, obviously, uh, it would be inefficient to have to continually scan uh, all 4,096 bits whenever an event turns up. So, on a per VCP basis, there's this uh, thing called the selector word. So we've got a 64-bit word, uh, and each bit inside the selector word corresponds to a word within the uh, shared memory. So uh, when you handle event, you go through each bit in the selector word, find the first uh, bit set, look in that corresponding word, and, and find all the set bits in there and handle those interrupts. So uh, what are the problems with this design? Well, uh, the first thing is there's just too few. Uh, 4,096. Uh, it's good enough for now. Um, we support 4,000. We have the 4,096 limit within uh, Zen Server, and Zen Server can only handle up to uh, something like 300 VMs. Uh, if you want to go any more, you, you run out of event channels. Uh, there's also no way of having any sort of event channel priority between the event channels. They're all um, handled the same priority. And uh, also, uh, because it's just a flat array of bits and you don't know when events turn up, uh, it's also unfair. And uh, I'll have a graph later on that illustrates that a bit better. Um, but basically, the algorithm used is only to service the scan the bits, is only fair if the uniform distribution of events, which tends not to be the case. Uh, we also have some additional requirements that we want for a new ABI. Um, we would like that to be the ABI to be the same for 32-bit and 64-bit guests because uh, it creates uh, extra complexity within the hypervisor and guests if you have to have different uh, if they have different ABIs. Um, 
We also want to make sure that we don't have an uh, excessive amount of memory usage um, because each piece of shared memory uh, between Zen uses up uh, a limited set of global shared uh, mapping space within Zen. Uh, so we don't want to completely blow that away. And also, uh, we would like uh, an ABI that could be extended in the future to perhaps even more or potentially other, other use cases. Um, so this is the, uh, the new uh, FIFO based design. On the uh, right hand side, instead of this the, we have the shared memory between the guest and Zen, and instead of uh, just a bit array of pending bits, we actually have an array of uh, event words. Um, each word has a pending bit uh, as before and a mass bit as before. Then it has two additional fields, the link bit, uh, L, uh, and uh, the link field. And this is used to, uh, as you can see, to construct a, um, a link list, a uh, simple singly linked list, uh, and it's used to create a, a FIFO uh, of pending events. So you can see here that uh, event channel one on, on port one is, was the first event that turned up, and then, then six, and then, then three. Um, and then in the per vCPU shared area, we have uh, uh, the head pointers, so where the head is. Um, and because uh, events can only be on one, effectively in one FIFO, um, we can interleave many uh, lists onto the same event array. So we can have multiple heads. So in, this, in the actual implementation, we have up to 16 heads, which gives us uh, 16 different uh, event priorities. Um, and then to allow the guest to uh, see which queues have pending events, we also have a ready field, which is similar to the, uh, the selected bit in the two-level design. And that a set bit in that says there's, there's some pending events on a particular queue. Um, So uh, one thing uh, about the using a shared memory interface is that you, most well, typically with a, with a, a list, you you synchronize access to the list with spin locks. Obviously, in with a uh, shared memory implementation between Zen and, and a guest, you can't do that. So uh, this is the uh, core algorithm we use to actually link an event. So. So part of raising events. First, we just set the event pending. Um, and we check if it's masked. Um, if it's masked, we don't do anything because the, the guest is not interested at this time. And then we check if it's already in the list. And if it's already in the list, we also don't need to do anything. Um, then we add it to the list. Uh, and then we atomically uh, set the uh, link field of the, of the tail of the list. Um, to, the, to point to our new event. Um, or if there isn't a tail, or rather if the tail is not currently in the list, i.e. the list is empty, then we set the uh, head field so the uh, guest can find the new head. Uh, and then finally we advance the um, tail to point to our new event. Uh, and then conversely, when we handle event, uh, we read a local copy of head initially. Um, so uh, the guest uh, keeps his own copy of the head pointer, so it never has to write back to the Zen, the shared head. So Zen never has to, so Zen only writes the head and it, re it removes some potential race conditions. Uh, and if the, if the last link field you read was zero, then that current local head would be zero. And we know that we previously emptied the list, so then we read the new value of the head out of the uh, per vCPU uh, control block, um, and then we uh, clear the link field and the linked bit, and that removes that event from the list. Uh, we advance uh, head, our local copy of head, to the uh, the new head, which if it is the tail of the list, this will this will set the head to zero, so that when we go back around next time around, we know to pick up the next head. And then if the event is still pending, if something else hadn't cleared it, like if the event channel was disconnected or something, and if it's not been masked, then you just call the, the, the interrupt handler. Um, so this, 
graph here illustrates uh, one of the, the key uh, one of the key benefits other than just having lots more um, is its fairness so uh, by fairness we mean the um, average latency of an event should be independent of its port number and independent of any other events that are occurring uh, elsewhere so uh, this graph is from a very contrived test, deliberately constructed to show worst case behavior. Um, so what we have here, and this is actually uh, the, the use case that it's, uh, or the setup that it's using is not dissimilar to what you'd actually see in a real DOM0, for example. So in a real DOM0, what you typically have is you would have um, you'd have a whole bunch of physical ERCs at low event channel numbers, you have a whole bunch here, and then spread out to the rest of the event channel space, you'd have all the front end, the uh, event channels going to front ends. Um, and typically what you get is you see all the physical ERCs here would be a lot higher rate on average than the, the, the spread out of the, all the other events. So you'd end up with a, you wouldn't end up with a uniform distribution of events uh, rate. Um, so in this uh, example here, we basically have a, a port 73, I think. Um, we have an event that occurs about five or so times more often than uh, the events uh, in the rest of the space, the other, other nine events. So, uh, effectively what that means is that um, the algorithm that the two-level base design uh, uses always ends up scanning for bits starting from the same place, which is always after the highest rate. So, the one immediately after the highest rate, so port 73, is always service first and has lowest latency, um, and then it gradually climbs up. Uh, as you move away, and then finally the highest rate one has the worst latency because that's the one that's always service last. Whereas you can see with the FIFO based design, because uh, events are serviced in the order that they're raised, um, we, have, we have completely uniform uh, average latency. Uh, so uh, the current status of this work is the Zen Sport has merged as of last week, I think. Um, Linux support, uh, so yeah, the Zen support should be in 4.4. Um, Linux support is done. Uh, it may make it into 3.13, uh, but it's, I mean, it definitely will be in uh, 3.14. Um, and then uh, there's still some further work uh, in this area, not specifically to do with uh, extended limit. Um, Although we've added support for 16 different priorities, um, we don't actually make use of this feature yet heavily. We, uh, we use effectively one priority for the timer interrupt uh, in Linux, so that the timer interrupt always gets serviced first, uh, and the, all the other events are all serviced at the default priority. Um, so this is done just because I didn't have time to actually spend time investigating how you could effectively use priorities. For example, it might be useful to put uh, the event channels used to signal QMU to do MMIO as high priority, because that's likely to require low latency. Um, and you might want to put the bulk data events for things like block back or net back uh, at a lower priority. But I mean, that would have to be, someone have to actually try that out and see if it actually helps. Um, one of the things that got added, um, uh, because as you increase the uh, number of event channels that a guest uses, it consumes more resources inside Zen. Uh, we want to make sure that guests can't consume too many of those resources. So there's a new uh, hypercall, a new DOM control, uh to limit the number of event channels that a guest may bind. So there's support for that in Excel. So there's new command, there's new uh, configuration file option, uh, max event channels that you can set to limit that. Uh, and the default is set such that um, 
any typical DOM U would, wouldn't hit the limit. So the default is uh, 1,023, um, which would be fine for almost all DOM U's, except maybe driver domains. You might need to change that. Um, but uh, other tool stacks might want to implement that. So you might want to plumb that through to uh, the Zappi tool stack or libvert. Um, there's only support for guest support. We've I've only done Linux. Um, so if you run a DOM zero using some other, I think NetBSD does DOM zero or FreeBSD, then you might want to add that to one of the BSDs. Um, and a related work, as you start uh, increasing our event channels, we're increasingly going to hit um, a spin lock contention inside Zen because there's a single event channel lock per domain. And every time you send a notification to a domain, you have to take that domain's uh, event lock, which means that for a driver domain or DOM0, all the other domains will be contending on uh, acquiring that event channel lock. Um, uh, and also, there's something else I'm working on, which is just a bit of refactoring of the, how Linux sets up its physical ERICs. Not that interesting. Um, so uh, there's a design document. If you want to know more, uh, you can get to it from that link. Um, it goes into more details and explains how it covers the complete algorithm used. Uh, um, so if you're implementing it either in, in Guest in, a, uh, in another OS, you'll want to read that. We're just interested. So uh, uh, any, any questions? Tim was first. So on your graph of latency fairness, yep. uh, I noticed that it looks like the average latency is fairer but higher yes. in the new scheme. Do you know where that latency comes from and have you got a plan to try and get uh, it? I believe most of it comes from... Um, It's effectively just extra cost of the of having to link and uh, effectively unlink. It's more expensive to do the comp exchange than a simple uh, bunch of tests and clear bits. I think I'd not profiled or anything to uh, to tell, but uh, we also have this thing where uh, to support the different priorities. After we handle a new event, we go back and do another exchange on the ready field to see if there's a high priority queue pending. Um, that might add extra cost. And it um, the, so you did say that the, the one on the left um, happens five times as often as the other ones, right? Uh, the, the, the I one forget that's the exact. I've, effectively, the test setup is that um, when we, effectively, where we set it up so that we service three events. Uh, at once, one of which is always at port 73, and the right. other two are randomly distributed throughout all the other nine ports. So oh, okay. it comes out as on so average it, four is or it, five times. Um, is it possible that the reason it's higher is because now you're always servicing, you're frequently servicing number 73 before the other ones? Maybe, maybe not, never mind. Uh, I'm not quite sure I followed that. Okay. Ne never mind. Um, so in the earlier charts, uh, it mentioned that the DOM U kernel is what um, f puts the event back on the free list. I'm curious, how does the hypervisor allocate from the free list without having a race with the guest freeing something on the free list? Uh, so in this pseudocode, the link um, you basically you do a comp exchange and uh, as part of that you test to see whether when you're putting it on, to test to see whether the tail is still on the list atomically by checking the link bit and if it clears during that comp exchange, you, the comp exchange will fail, go back around again, you'll see that the link is clear and then you'll, you'll you'll go back and say, the list, list is empty, I need to set head and then tell the guest that there's, the, there's new events pending on this queue. 
Um, and similarly, uh, when, you, when you remove, um, the unlink is another uh, can be exchanged to atomically clear both link and linked simultaneously. Um, and then return the, the value that it just cleared. The design document has more pseudocode and explanation of, of this, if you're interested. <laughs> I have a question. Can you turn to the, the, the future work or to-do list? Sorry, which? Uh, I mean the future work or to-do list, oh, the last page. work, yeah. I think you said you mentioned about the Zen event log scalability. So what actually does this mean? Uh, do you mean is there any serious contentions in the existing Zen event log? Uh, by this new implementation? I have, yeah, I have done uh, synthetic tests I was stress testing the event chain device actually to effectively remove I remove a similar bottleneck in the event chain device where uh, there was a, effectively a single global lock regardless of how many users of an event chain device how many times you'd opened it so all QMUs despite the fact they'd opened event, dev event chain independently would all contend on the same event channel lock and as part of testing that uh, I wonder if I can pull up the graph. I don't know if I have Wi-Fi. Probably not. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, there was a the if you just spam an event channel a lot as part of testing, you see this really easily. <laughs> um, whether it's actually an issue in practice, uh, I don't know, but um, I can certainly see it as we tackle some of the other contention points. So once we've tackled, say, the grant table locking contention, uh, then the event channel lock contention is probably important. But I don't have any data to, to show that. Uh, you have a question as well, yes. Uh, any other questions? Sorry about that. So have you tried running large numbers of VMs with this? And uh, another question, uh, are there other impediments to doing so other than event channels? Yes, uh, to the second part. Yes, there are other limits. Uh, I think Jonathan Davies has a talk later on. We'll go more into the general scalability of Zen. Um, I have not actually run that many VMs, because my test box doesn't have enough memory. But I've, uh, you can basically create as many effectively loopback events or whatever you like. And so I've run 100,000 plus you know, events up to the, the limit a number. So, uh, but I've not run lots of VMs. Yeah, I think Waze done some work as well on that. I remember he's given a. Uh, but that's a different design. So. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, but uh, but that's a different design, so I, I don't think my experiment counts for this. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So maybe we can repeat that at some point. That might be uh, yeah, Is sure. Any, uh, the yeah, there's, there's uh, actually uh, very bottlenecks, not, not only the event channel, I think. Yeah. Uh, more questions? No? All right. Uh, in that case, uh, thank you. <laughs>